In this video, we'll go over GitHub Actions, what they are, how to configure GitHub Actions, and how to create one from scratch. GitHub Actions let you create a software lifecycle in your Git repository. The workflows are known as Actions. GitHub has many predefined templates for you to take advantage of. If you look here, this gives you a preview of what's going to be available in these Git Actions and kind of what this job template will look like. Just like some of the newer tools, TFS and Jenkins, you do configuration as code and you're using a YAML file and you say what trigger you want it to be on, um, you, and then you start defining your jobs by giving them names and uh, we'll work through this a little bit more in detail. So the first thing you'll notice is that inside of GitHub, if you're in every version except for enterprise on-premise, you have a section here called actions. Enterprise on-premise is the only one that doesn't have this. Enterprise cloud does have it, um, but eventually enterprise on-premise should get this ability as well. If you click on actions here, you can see that I have a whole bunch of actions that I've been playing with. Um, I deleted them out of here, so we'll see how to set these up. You can see that there's new workflow here, but we'll just take a look at that in a second. So normally if there's workflows set up, there'll be a folder in here called uh, .github, and inside of that there will be a folder called workflows, and inside of that there will be a YAML file. So let's just set that up here. We're going to start by clicking on new work workflow, and since this is a .NET project or .NET Core project. We're just going to scroll down here and look for .NET. I didn't see it on here, so I'm just going to see if I can search for it. All right, so here's here's the .NET Core one. So we're going to just click set up this workflow. And I'm just going to leave the default name there. But uh, there's there's some information on here that we can do some different things with. Here this is telling it which branches we're going to push on. Um, you can actually you can actually do something else here. So if you use single star you can match on every branch that doesn't contain a slash. If you do star slash star you can match on every branch that contains a single slash. Or, or you can just do star star to match everything. You just wildcard everything. Or else you can do the um, bang master to exclude the master branch. So I'm just going to change mine to be um, asterisk to asterisk so that it just pulls in every branch. But um, I just want to make sure that you guys know those are available because it's not always easy to find in the documentation. So I'm just going to change the syntax here. Do this. And make sure that's the right number of spaces there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the pull request. So now, now on every push, branches from any branch will trigger this, and any pull request from any branch will do the same build. Um, here you can see that we're choosing the latest Ubuntu release. You can also change this to latest Windows. I'm not going to do that here just because the Ubuntu one's faster and I have no need to use a different one. If you need to specifically do Windows or do a matrix of different ones, which is just the array of different um, operating systems, you can set two, three, four of those there or different versions that you want to be testing compatibility with, especially if you're running like end-to-end -end tests. You could do those uh, in basically this block right here. And then we have the steps, and these are the actual actions. So this use us is using an action of checkout, which is going to go grab our code. We have an action here of setting up .NET, which is going to go pull the version for us. And then we just have these named uh, these named steps that we're going to run the console uh, commands for us. So before I go too far, I do want to show you that this width here, we do want to set up .NET, but we don't want to set up 3.1 because we're using .NET 5. There's this link, I'll put it in the description below. It gives us the latest SDK, and you want to actually use this SDK number. You don't want to use this runtime or release. Uh, you need to use the actual SDK because that's what it's using to download this. So I'm just going to change this to this SDK version and start the commit. So I'm just going to leave it all the same and just commit straight to master here. Um, I don't have any other rules set up. But if we look here now, if we go to the actions, you can see this turn to yellow. This one's actually running now. So if I just click into it, 
the job's queued. It's in progress. It already started with the container. It knew based off the trigger that that was a commit. It was on one of the branches that happened to be master. And then if you click in here, you can see the actions actually going through. It pulled down our version. It actually set up properly. We can see here that it is running on Linux on this version of Ubuntu. And then now it's installing the dependencies where it's installing the .NET 5, or it actually did that here for us as well. So um, I guess this is our NuGet packages, but um, then it's just gonna run our .NET build and then run .NET test. In the master branch, we don't actually have any tests. So this is kind of a false step here. Um, it won't actually do anything, but our .NET build was successful. Um, we can see that it builds successfully. So our action's complete. This is just a basic walkthrough of how you can set up the GitHub actions, but let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you.